For today's video, we will be talking about acid catalyzed ring opening of epoxides. Our rule is that if the reagent is an acid, then attacks the carbon with the most amount of substituents. Let's do an example here. We have an epoxide. We would use HX as our reagent. In this case, X can be any halogen element, HCl, HBr, and HI, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. In this case, we put OH and X. It doesn't matter where we put the halogen because the carbon here is all equal, so there's no least or most amount of substituents. They're all the same in this case. Let's do another example here. We have an epoxide here, and this will react with HBr. And so in this case, we'd have a methyl on the right on the epoxide, so it attacks the carbon with the most amount of substituents. Would it be on the right side? We would draw this, rings open, and we have bromine on the right. I would draw bromine on the wedge because we can show stereochemistry here, so I would do this. You could also put a dash on the OH in this case. Let's do another example, but this time we have an epoxide, but we will use H2SO4 with water. Same thing, it attacks the carbon with the most amount of substituents. This is an acid catalyzed ring open, so we would have OH and OH. So two alcohols on the structure. Let's do another example. We have epoxide, and this is reacting with H2SO4 and water. Again, um, we will have to put it on the carbon with the most amount of substituents. So let's draw this like that. We have a dash over there. So it would be that carbon. So we have the ring open. So we have OH here. We would have this methyl over here, a dash up there, and OH right here. Let's do another example, but this time we would use H2SO4 and methanol instead of water. Same thing, it attacks the carbon with the most amount of substituents. So we'd have a methyl on the left, let's draw that methyl on the left on the structure. So it attacks that carbon. Instead of putting OH, we would put now OCH3. Okay, we would add a methanol on the structure in this case. We can also draw a wedge and a dash here to show stereochemistry okay so i can draw a wedge there and then the o oxygen can have the dash in this case it doesn't matter but i'm drawing it like this now let's show the mechanism for this let's start with something simple with the, um, the halogens so we have hbr in this case the oxygen grabs the hydrogen kicks off the bromine and now we have this with a positive charge on the oxygen okay Mechanism is very simple. Now the bromine comes in, packs the carbon with the most amount of substituents, but in this case it doesn't matter. They're all equal and kicks off uh, electrons to oxygen here. And we have a final product of something like this. And this is our answer. Let's do the mechanism for H2SO4. We have an epoxide. Our first reagent would be H2SO4. Then we would use water. In this case, the H2SO4 would look like this. Hydrogen connected to oxygen, sulfur to oxygen like this, another oxygen, hydrogen. The lone pairs on the, on the epoxide goes and grabs the hydrogen, kicks off the uh, electrons to oxygen. We have this structure right here with a positive charge, oxygen. Now in this case, water comes in, attacks the carbon with the most amount of substituents. In this case, it does not matter. They're all the same. So, attacks one side, kicks off the electrons to oxygen, expels it, open up the ring. So, we have something like this with oxygen having a, a positively charge on the bottom. Now, the H2SO4 comes back with that oxygen and a negatively charged, uh, neg negative charge. It comes in, grabs the hydrogen, and gives the electrons to oxygen, giving us a final product of this OH and OH plus H2SO4 that we had just we had made now.